Hi, Jono from the French Wine Centre here for episode two of Taste Then Drink. Tonight we are going to be looking at three wines from Agnes Edidia Dovisar, based in Chablis. So, we've got three wines, so we're going to need three glasses. Now that is if you are going to join in for the full lineup. Otherwise, feel free to just open one bottle or two bottles or no bottles and just watch. Um, however, if you've got a group of friends, three glasses each um, is the best way to do it. So, uh, have a little sip of each of the wines. Familiarise yourself with them. Get a bit of an idea about what these guys are about and what Chablis is about before we start to discuss the different wines and who they are and where Chablis is. So, Chablis, for those that know it, is a famed region at the northern most tip of Burgundy that grows beautiful Chardonnay. It is probably one of the most recognisable Chardonnays on the planet as they are steely and mineral and speak of the soil probably more, more than any other wine on the entire planet. They're incredibly popular from connoisseurs to people that love fresh, you know, white wine. Um, it's located just in between Burgundy and Champagne. Now, although it's a part of Burgundy, it actually shares more in common with the climate and the soil of Champagne. Although it doesn't have bubbles, it does still have that same sort of mineral drive that a lot of the great sort of smaller producers in the Cote de Blanc, i.e. Gibra, that we tried last week. Now, going into the township of Chablis from, say, Champagne, there's a main road in and you go through the town Bain. Bain. I'm not too sure on the pronunciation of uh, the, the, the township. However, that is where Agnes and Didier Dovisar are based. And if you keep driving a little bit further on, on the left-hand side, there's a big man-made dam. And then you keep following that along and you're sure to hit the Serran River. Then you'll have the Grand Cruz on the left-hand side, an impressive large slope. And then you turn across the Serran River and into the township of Chablis. Now, when I travel to France, uh, I fly into Charles de Gaulle. I go through Champagne for a day or two. Uh, maybe Paris for a night just before, just to get over some jet lag, have a walk around and go to some wine bars. But when I really feel like I am uh, in a wine wonderland is when I get to Chablis. Now, Chablis is an incredibly desolate uh, village in winter. In summer, it feels like spring. They do get a bit of heat, but it truly does feel like just spring year round. They're very, very big in their rugby. They've got a pub in the middle of the town, which is uh, very, very, not very, very similar, but in the scheme of things compared to other bars in um, France, it feels a little bit Australian, particularly with that sporting, uh, you know, sort of background with their Chablis team, uh, uh, rugby team, um, rivaled probably only by Hotel de Sens in Meursault, which also feels a touch Australian, a touch of a classic sort of pub. Um, in terms of dining, uh, probably the, oh, the finest food, uh, a Japanese uh, chef uh, at a restaurant called Ofi de Zunk. Uh, incredibly fine food, very small. Japanese food goes beautifully with uh, champagne. You know, very fresh ingredients, um, minimal, minimal ingredients, very fresh quality sort of products and produce. Um, and then if you wanted to go somewhere a little bit more classic, uh, uh, Hostillery de Clos, which is probably you know a very premium hotel and also a very fine dining silver service restaurant. They've got a little sister bistro, Le Bistro de Grand Cru, which is probably where you should go every uh, on your first night. Just go straight to Le Bistro de Grand Cru, um, run by a lovely team, very modest, uh, classic. The food is marvellous. Um, the wines on the wine list are uh, good, but there's one particular wine that everyone should get. Um, uh, Agnes's uh, um, cousin, um, uh, Vincent Dovisar, 
uh, on the list for 68 euros. Now that's a thousand dollar plus bottle anywhere else in the world. So that's, that's my little um, uh, routine. Rock up to Chablis, check into Hostillery de Clos, walk next door, have a uh, little beer, uh, a Madame, which is a beautiful Chablis beer, and then order my bottle of uh, Le Clos uh, Dovisa. And, and I just enjoy some snails, and then I have some, yeah, I have a, a few things. Now, Agnes Adidia Dovisa, um, based in Bayern, uh, they have 13 hectares under vines. Now, even though uh, uh, they are f not from winemaking families, they are distant cousins of Vincent Dovisar. However, he did train at, uh, at René Vincent Dovisar. So there's a slight sort of parallel in terms of airiness and minimalistic handling here that shares uh, a, a similarity with, uh, with their wines. Um, they make predominantly three wines, a Petit Chablis, a Chablis AC, and a Chablis Premier Cru Brouillard, which is within their township. Um, planted in the late 1980s, their first vintage in 1989. Um, in 2012, their son Florent joined the team, and previous to that, he worked at Copan in Hillsburg in America, and also Frédéric Munier in Chambel Musini, which is an incredibly famous producer. Um, meeting Florence, so I, I dealt with Agnes uh, Adidia uh, the, the first few visits, and then I met Florent, um, and it's pretty obvious he's a pretty thoughtful winemaker and definitely um, uh, wants, to, wants, to, wants to do everything right. He, you know, you know he, he, he respects the terroir, um, not that his parents didn't, but I think that he's going to be even more aggressive with lower yields, um, organics. Uh, there's some talks about biodynamics, but they're not too sort of crash hot because it's such a marginal climate, Chablis. It is very hard to farm uh, yeah, bi biodynamically. Now, moving on to the wines. Now, if you are going to uh, taste all three at once, pour them into a glass. On your left-hand side, Put the Petit Chablis in the middle, the Chablis. On the right-hand side, the Premier Cru Brouillard. So that's the other way around for you, but left, lightest, right, most complex. So first things first, have a look at the colour. Now, these are all raised in stainless steel, no wood. However, there are some distinct sort of differences in sights here. The colour of the Petit Chablis has a sort of a slight sort of green tinge. The middle has a little bit more depth, a little bit more gold. Definitely not gold, but just a little bit more sort of depth. And then the Bouwar is a little bit darker than the Petit Chablis, but definitely sh still shares the uh, green hue and a little bit lighter. Now, let's smell them all. Subtle but distinct differences. The Petit Chablis, very lifted, floral. It's, it has a, a greenness to it, a bit in, in a very sort of pleasant way. But it's, it, it sort of feels a little bit sort of lighter, sort of less concentrated than the next two. Now, the Chablis is a lot more restrained. So you smell it and you sort of think, oh, there's some richer flavours there, but I just can't quite smell them. And then the Brouillard has the same sort of, sort of green, sort of lace floral nuance as the Petit. It has the depth of the Chablis combined and has just another layer. However, it is a little bit sort of lighter on its feet than the Chablis. So, so far, the Chablis is sort of looking the heaviest. Now, Let's sip them. Light, energetic, mineral, but not overpoweringly so. 
fine, beautiful. I, I, I really enjoy that little Petit Chablis. Um, on our first shipment of the 17s, I should say actually, these are all 2018, sorry. Uh, on our first shipment, um, we didn't get any Petit Chablis. So this is the first time that I've become acquainted to the Petit Chablis. Numerous bottles have been consumed and I can't get enough of it. Now the Chablis has a lot more density. It's broader across the palate, the structure's heavier. Where this is like a cool sort of breeze going through rocks, this is more like a preserved lemon and lemon pith. Now, the Premier Crew Boiwa is light on its feet and it actually has both of these. So it's got the structure of the Chablis, probably a little bit less broad, a little bit more refined and long, but then it's got the lift and the airiness of the Petit Chablis. Now, so just to recap, the Petit Chablis, beautiful, energetic, light, lifted on the palate, a little bit lighter, it's still mineral, but not overpoweringly so. The middle, the Chablis, broader on the nose, broader on the palate, more restrained on the nose, a little bit more power, less like that and a little bit rounder. The Premier Cru Brouillard, combination of both, very lifted, layered, complex with structure, but a little bit longer rather than just being round. So Petit Chablis, in, term, in Chablis there's a hierarchy. So you have Petit Chablis, which is usually grown on Portlandian soil, Portlandian clay. Uh, then you have Kimmeridgian clay. And that is where you get all the little fossils, you know, the little oyster shells and, and the like. And that's what gives Chablis its really sort of high mineral content. So although this is mineral, these have a lot more distinction in terms of aggression. Now, then you've got Chablis, which is up, Grano Kimmeridgian. Then you have Premier Cru. Now, there's 26 named um, uh, uh, Premier Cru sites throughout Chablis. And then you've got Grand Cru's. So technically there's actually only one Grand Cru, but um, multiple um, climas within the hill of the Grand Cru, just by the township. Chablis itself is split down the middle, not perfectly so, sort of starts northwest and then finishes southeast um, by a river called the Saran River, which is absolutely beautiful. Um, but what it does is it, it allows you to break up Chablis into two. And it sort of it gives you a bit of a, a better understanding. So when you look at these wines blind, if you're playing a game of options with friends, um, you can look at them. And on the right-hand side of the Saran River, which you've got the Hill of the Grand Cruz, um, the hill, hill of the Grand Cruz, then you've got um, a Monte de Tenere, Monte de Mieux, and above that foreshore, these wines all have a lot more sun and the wines are more dense and structured. Whereas the left-hand side, where Beauvoir is from, and actually, funnily enough, the Petit, and we'll get into that in a moment, are a lot cooler, a lot more mineral, a lot more floral, less body. Now, let's talk about the Petit. Now, as we mentioned before, the Petit Chablis is from the left bank. So it sees a little bit less sunlight, so it's lighter on its feet, it's lighter, it's more lifted, more florals. And I actually love the left back. A lot of people love the structure and the breadth and the power that you get from wines on the right back. But I think that there's something very, very seductive and intriguing with the wines from the left back. They have four hectares of vines for Petit Chablis. Some and not just on the Portlandian clay, but also on the Kim region. I think that's where you get the fineness in this wine. Now, the Chablis AC is relatively special. Most, not all, comes from a little plot behind Blanchot Grand Cru. So if you look at the hill of um, the Grand Cru, it goes like that. Le Clos, which is the most famous, which faces the most south, and then Blanchot. And just behind that, um, just behind the woods, is where their Chablis AC vineyard is. And you can really tell, if you go for a walk up the Clos in the morning, you know, to burn off last night's uh, uh, snails and, and the like, that you probably would have had at uh, Le Bistro de Grand Cru, 
um, you, you'll notice the, the sun comes through and you can see exactly where the Grand Cru's and Premier Cru's sort of start and finish because it comes down to sunlight. In a marginal climate, sunlight is, is everything. And you can actually see, you know, you can, if you spend the morning up there or the afternoon, you can see where the sun sort of comes and goes and where it doesn't. And where it doesn't is usually forest. Um, and it's really quite interesting to see. But that breadth is coming from that, um, you know, exposure to sunlight. And the very high content of uh, Kimmeridge in uh, clay. Uh, that it gets from being on the hill with all the other Grand Cru's. No, the Premier Cru Bouillard. It's, if we go back to, let's just say we've driven into Chablis, now we're driving back out towards Champagne. The uh, man-made dam will be on the right-hand side. If you look directly opposite that, you'll see a hill of vines, which is relatively south-facing, but it's still in a very sort of cool sort of area. Um, now, being near a body of water, it helps uh, avoid frost, but it also gives off um, a warmer temperature. The body of water holds heat, so throughout the night, the vines don't get as cold, so they can continue to ripen. Now, on to the Premier Cru, Bouillard. So, now we're on the left bank of Chablis. And if we're driving, now we're driving out of Chablis towards Champagne. On the right-hand side, before we get to Bien, there'll be the uh, man-made lake. Now, if we look across that, on the other side, there's a slope, which is relatively south-facing, but still in a very cool spot. So we're getting all the characteristics of the left bank that we see so clearly in the Petit Chablis. So that's the lift and the white florals. But then we're also getting a little bit more exposure to the sunlight but we're also getting that body of water that is um, holding heat throughout the evening. So you, when the, you know, being a continental um, uh, climate, um, you have uh, quite substantial diurnal difference, which is the temperature difference between the day and the night. Now, what the water does is it moderates the temperature throughout the night. So the, the drop in temperature isn't so drastic. It also uh, minimises frost damage, which is very handy as a Vinron. Uh, so you won't have any frost damage or loss, um, and you can just, yeah, have nice consistent balanced yields. So if we look here, if we look in the glass, when I say look, I mean smell. We have white florals, we have a, still have a sort of a green nuance, but we've got that sort of preserved or pickled lemon uh, that we're getting in the Chablis, and that sort of comes from a bit of that sunlight. Not overpoweringly so, just both elements have come together. Now, on the palette. On the palette, you know, the structure is generously there, but it's longer and shaped more like that, rather than round, like the Chablis AC, and the actual sort of phenolic structure and the minerality is more sort of chiselled, smaller, finer, whereas this is sort of like a rolling, more sort of coarse rocks. This is finer rocks in your mouth. Uh, and it's funny because people talk about, um, you know, with, with Chablis, on the left bank, it's, there's almost a character of, um, you know, mountain air going through sort of rocks. On the right bank, there's a, there's a skim milk sort of going through rocks. And that sort of uh, milk or dried milk or uh, that sort of character comes from a little bit more sort of body and a uh, little bit more structure. Uh, and on the left bank, I love, I love the word airiness because once you drink the Petit Chablis and the Brouillard, you really do sort of understand what that means. It's, there's, there's flavor in nothingness, you know? It's, you can see the structure, but you can also, there's, there's space in between that structure. It sounds silly, um, and it's very hard to describe unless you're drinking it, but uh, it can go over someone's head like that. If they're just drinking this at a barbecue and they're talking to 10 people on a 40 degree day, and there's no focus, and they might finish it and be like, oh, that was delicious. Um, whereas if you sit down and actually look at it, and someone explains, you know, look at that structure, it's like, um, 
you know, fresh mountain hair, uh, air going through sort of mountain herbs and, you know, sort of rocks, you know, it, it really does make sense and it really is quite lovely. So those are the three wines. I don't have a particular favourite. I love them all. The Petit Chablis, light, bright, uh, beautiful florals, nice little fine uh, sort of grain and structure. Chablis, a little bit sort of broader, more breadth, uh, more of an emphasis on pickled lemon and preserved lemon rather than florals. The Premier Cru, a little bit of column A, a little bit of column B, but definitely overwhelmingly left bank um, and the most complex. Uh, it is, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a great, it's a great exercise to do, to look at three wines, three different um, uh, hierarchical levels. Um, it's a bugger they don't have a Grand Cru because it would just be the perfect uh, tasting to understand how you know, Petit Chablis, Chablis, Chablis Premier Cru, Chablis Grand Cru works. Uh, alas, they don't, uh, but they do a fine job at these three wines. So we are going to head up to the stables and we are going to have a glass of wine or two and do some winter warming pairings. So I will see you there in a moment. Welcome back. Now we're done with formalities, let's get straight into the food and wine pairing. So carrying on from last week, when we tasted through champagnes, instead of going down the lines of uh, pairing with the classics like Chablis and crayfish, we went for a few winter warmers. Now that is going to be the same with this week, except for one exception, Hambon per se which is a Chablis specialty of ham, hambon, per se, parsley, and a brawn. Now, one of the first things you should do when you get to Chablis is get a bottle of Chablis. First and foremost, get a bottle of Chablis. Get some hambon, per se, a baguette. Now, I was a little late to the store, so a French stick was not available. This is as good as I could get. However, it's just going to have to do. Rip off a bit of baguette. I'll turn that off for the moment. Put a little bit of batter on. A chunk of hamburn per se. That is as close to getting, sorry, that is as close to being in Chablis as you'll get. Now for the tester. With Petty Chablis on my left and your right. The Petit Chablis having a little less definition, but that beautiful airiness goes wonderfully with the parsley. Doesn't overpower the ham. Now, now with the Chablis AC, Being based on the right bank, well, predominantly, well, there's more power and structure. It overpowers the food, it complements the wine, makes the wine a little bit sort of fresher and longer, but it does overpower the wine a little bit. Now, onto the Premier Group. The Premier Crew, where you are, having the same sort of airiness with the Petit Chablis, but a little bit more defined. On the nose, it goes beautifully and compliments. And on the palate, you can feel the minerality trying to burst through. 
However, it actually might be a little bit too much for the wine. It doesn't necessarily complement the minerality, but it, it definitely does get a lot out of the nose. So in terms of dollar value, for the Hambon per se, when you first arrive in Chablis and you go to the Boulangerie, pick up your French stick, pick up your Hambon per se, get a bottle of Agnes Adidia Dovisar Petit Chablis, and that will more than suffice. Escargo. Don't be afraid of snails. They are your friend. They are utterly delicious. When they're crawling across the garden and they do leave a little sludge, that has nothing to do with what, uh, what they taste like. They are nothing short of delicious. I was about to say incredible, but let's just keep it at delicious. Now, traditionally, you would take them out, cook them, and then place them back in their shells. However, not having an oven or a grill to grill them, we're not going to bother. We can also just chuck them into the garden. Now, first things first, butter. Good dollop. Spread that around the pan. Now, while that's melting and heating up, we're just going to take them all out. And I'll, I'll, I'll put them straight in. Ideally, we'd have a plate, we'd, we'd put them on the plate, let the butter warm up, put them in, cook them. Now, if you can't get them out, just spin it around and use the tail end of the fork. I've got a little oyster fork at the moment helping me. Now, for those that have had snails and are used to them, you can cook them a little bit, uh, a little bit underdone, and they're delicious and juicy. Not too underdone, and they become chewy. For those that haven't had snails before, cook the hell out of them, overtly so. Whack a lot of butter, a lot of salt, a lot of garlic almost caramelize them because you can make anything delicious and disguisable with enough butter. Now, when eating out in Chablis, uh, there are three favorite restaurants of mine, and not too many more. There are a couple, but they're standouts for me. Au Zunk, which is based in one of the La Roche buildings, which is a very large producer of Chablis. It's a Japanese guy, Japanese focused food with a little bit of French inspiration. Absolutely magnificent, really good wine list. Uh, a couple of bargains on there uh, and a couple of very expensive wines on there. Now, the other is uh, Le Bistro de Goncourt, which is a part of the um, Hostillerie de Clos, which is one of the really nice hotels. Better not forget about these. Now, Le Bistro de Goncourt, and Hostillery de Clos, a quintessential French cooking, Chablis cooking. Hostillery de Clos is a lot more high end, um, whereas Le Bistro de Goncourt is a very sort of classic, welcoming French bistro. Nothing over the top, but the food is absolutely delicious. And they do some magnificent snails, and I know that firsthand. Now, I've just got to catch up on a few things. A good whack of shallots. Good whack of garlic, salt, as always. What else have I forgotten here? That's it, a little bit of parsley at the end. Now let's just recap on the wines. That's still looking good. That's still looking good. Now we are going to do something slightly different here. We are going to add a good amount of white wine. And reason being is because our next dish is going to tie into it. So let that butter go down. 
The garlic is just burning a little bit. The shallots are just turning a little bit brown. Just want to cook through these a little bit more. Mm. Now the one thing I didn't mention before about the ham bon per se is the best place to have your ham bon per se when you first arrive in Chablis is down by the banks of the Seran River. Now, my favourite thing to do is I first and foremost go and buy a fishing rod when I arrive in France. Now, the fishing in France is actually fairly terrible. The idea of sitting on the banks of the Seran River is what keeps me ticking. Probably have more luck on the Loire. However, my favourite thing to do when I've got an afternoon off is to head down to the Seran River, forget butter, ham on per se, nice bottle of Chablis, something that you can't get from anywhere else, but just a little sort of just, just something different, always something different. Now we're gonna chuck some Chablis in now. We're in the stables and that just scared uh, all three of the horses. Sorry, Zart, sorry. Now. Let the wine burn off. Just try one. Let that reduce a little bit. We're going to put a little bit of cream in now to make up for the butter. So usually when you'd put them in the oven after, so you'd cook them like this in the wine, then you'd put them back in their shells, parsley, butter, garlic, and then they'll sort of roast and sort of, you know, grill and seal. Because, because we're not doing that, it loses a little bit of concentration. So you, if you're doing it this way, you really do have to like snail. It, it's just fine. Honestly, I just had one, not, just, not yet cooked through, and it was utterly delicious. Don't worry about that. Now. So. The beautiful thing about snail, actually, Sorry, before we continue. Good whack of lemon. Pinch of salt. Now, let's start that again. I cannot tell you how much that helped. Automatically alive. With the ham bon per se, it was beautiful, but it didn't necessarily enhance the wine or the food. Straight away, that has just accelerated that Chablis into something incredibly energetic. I'll have another little bit more just to be certain. Mm. So now we're talking. Now we're now... So 2018, as we mentioned before, when we're uh, inside, very warm vintage. Now, with warm vintages or old Chardonnays, when they're looking a bit big and broad, eat them, drink them, you can eat them as well, but drink them, please drink them, with something, with a good amount of salt on top, and it just tightens the wine up. Now, these are tight to start with, but this, the, these now look incredibly tight and taut. All right, onto the Chablis AC. Mm. 
Oh. The lemon and the salt. I just had a little crunch of garlic and a little bit of shallot, the parsley for freshness. See, beautiful. As we said before, that's a, a bigger sort of Chablis in terms of its breadth and its structure. And all that did was just make it even longer. Didn't take away from the structure, didn't build on the structure. It just gave it this beautiful length. Funnily enough, with the, with the Premier Cru Bourreau, the nose itself, it sort of, it automatically looks like a sort of a preserved sort of lime and a really sort of very nice and sort of lifted and floral sort of way. That just improved all three. That honestly just improved all three. Um, if you were starting out in an evening and you were just having a drink, I would honestly probably just have the Premier Crew first. In this situation where you're just having these uh, uh, snails, I would drink the Premier Crew first because I think that by itself is magical, airy, you know, skim milk going through stones. And if you're going to have something that's really quite powerful with a lot of butter and salt and lemon and parsley and all the rest, have the Petit Chablis or the Chablis because it honestly just brings it up to another level. It's really good. That's, that's delicious. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have another one with the, the Petit Chablis because I did miss out on the parsley on the first one. That is, that is so nice. If you, if, if you don't eat snails, you're missing out. Just go get them. Go get them. I mean, and if you don't want to pull them out of the, the, the shell, they do sell them um, in the cans. Very important. Sorry, I have forgotten. The Hambon Per Se and the next dishes, I'll say it now, the Duck Gizzards and the Chablis Sausage Specialty Andouettes is from Le Ducoc. So I believe they started out in McLaren Vale. I think they still are. But they have an online shop and also a stall at the Adelaide uh, Central Markets, and they are nothing short of sensational. I will put the link to their website, their online site, um, somewhere, um, but honestly, very, very good, very good. Uh, righto, well, for the snails cooked in garlic, shallots, parsley, and Chablis, everyone was a winner, more so the Petit Chablis and the Chablis AC. Now, we are on to the final dish, and it is absolutely quintessential Chablis cuisine. You cannot miss it when you drive into the township of Chablis. Andouettes, tripe sausage. Now, it sounds terrible, and it can be terrible, but it can also be absolutely magnificent. Now, classically, it'd be done in a beautiful sort of Almost a light sort of garlic sauce with a nice little bit of whole grain mustard. I dropped the cream before, so we're not going to be doing a cream based sauce. However, we will improvise. We've got a good amount of butter. We've got the Andouette sausage. We've got Dijon mayonnaise, anchovy, parsley, salt, garlic, shallots. And I think we can probably do something with that. But even if, even if you don't have the sauce, it doesn't matter. It's all about the Andouat sausage. So, a little bit of butter, as per always. The Andouat sausage from Le Ducoc. I'm very much looking forward to seeing how similar this is to the Andouat and Chablis. Funny looking thing. It smells of parsley, really quite clean.
initial smell, beautiful. I think we might be on here. Now, this is going to take a little bit to cook through, so we will see you in a minute or two, uh, and bye for now. Now, the andouettes seems to have cooked through. Just slicing a couple of little bits up. One bit over here. Now, so let's taste. Before I start, I decided against the sauce because I did actually taste it before and it is honestly delicious. It doesn't need the sauce. Quite often the sauce is there to, to hide the sort of the very ripe, tripe flavors. However, this is, this is uh, if you enjoy tripe, if you enjoy andouettes, that can be put off by sometimes of the ripeness. You've got to try this. This is very good. So, the andouettes itself, a little bit salty, but in a very pleasing way. The parsley flavour is quite strong. The meat is beautiful, tender, very juicy, not dry whatsoever, but not oily. I suppose that is, that's the key to a good andouette, is it's, it's, it's never dry, but it's never oily. Now, I'm not in a peanut butter ad, but that is truly what I get out of a good andouette. It's, it's just the perfect sausage without giving you a heart attack. Now, there's a little bit between the sip and the mouthful. However, it makes the Petit Chablis a little bit sort of tart. Complements the food, but not necessarily the wine. Oh, I've, got, I've got this. Seriously good. Now we're talking. So the robustness of the Chablis AC from the right bank really matches it. Makes the wine searing and long. Mm. I can I get enough of this? God, that's good. Chablis Premier Cru, Puriwa. A bit more of an emphasis. It turns it from sort of white florals to sort of slightly sort of yellow sort of florals. Funnily enough, it extends the Premier Crew more than the others. The nose on the, I, I don't necessarily love it with the Petit Chablis. The nose on the Chablis AC improves on the palate. It's got enough breadth and strength to combat. The Premier Crew on the nose, funnily enough, makes the florals, I prefer sort of white floral sort of features rather than sort of yellow, yellow sort of uh, you know, sort of slightly richer sort of floral features. But then on the palate, what it does is it rips it along, makes it a lot longer and actually uh, um, amplifies the fine sort of minerality in the structure. So I, I actually, yeah, wow, okay. Premier Cru Brewer, beautiful. Righto, well, I'm going to enjoy this. Thank you very much for tuning in again. And snails and andouettes, parfait.